Hello and uh, welcome everybody to my channel Lomini Bio Entrance and today we will be discussing CSIR of PYQs of the year 2022 for the subject for the unit Applied Biology and Methodology. I have done other parts also with previous year question. You can refer to my channel playlist for that. If you are new to my channel, please do like, share and subscribe. So this is the year June 2021 or February 22. So the first question given below are few statements on technologies concepts related to development of transgenic plants. Which one of the following option represent a combination of all incorrect statements? They have asked for incorrect statements. First one. Frequency of genetic transformation is influenced only by the genes of agrobacterium and not by those of the host plant. That statement it's itself is wrong because host plant genes also interfere. So that is your first. So wherever A comes, A comes only in option 1. Okay, we will see D also. A non-conditional negative selection marker has to be necessarily used with a strong constitutive promoter for the development of transgenic plants. That is also not correct. It necessarily need not always be used. So option A and D are correct. Next one. Given below are few terms related to map based sequencing of genomes. Uh, which among which one of the following option represent the correct order of steps based on the above terms in map based sequencing so first will be isolation of dna then digestion then cloning then making contigs and then sequencing so we'll see one by one so first will be pulse field gel electrophoresis that is for isolation of your dna so first will be c then comes uh, partial digestion with restriction enzymes a then comes cloning in cosmids yaks or bags then comes um, assembly of contigs then subcloning and sequencing so the sequence will be c a d b e option 2 next question Given below are various protein cleaving reagents and their recognition sites in the target protein. Which one of the following options represent the correct combination of items? <coughs> so first one is cyanogen bromide, CNBR. CNBR is meth methylene alanine. It cleaves on the carboxyl sites of methylene. So A3, <coughs> trypsin, trypsin on carboxyl side of arginine or lysine so 4 b4 caspase caspase on aspartic acid alanine and chymotrypsin on phenylalanine alanine because it cleaves the aromatic amino acids so the correct answer will be option 4 next one Inverse PCR is performed for site directed mutagenesis with complementary primers having the desired mutation using a plasmid having the cloned gene as template. The following statements were made regarding the above experiment. Which one of the following options represent a combination of all correct statements? PCR followed by transformation of bacterial cells directly with the reaction mixture. A large number of the transformants will be will have the wild type gene wild type gene that is correct. Then next one, the PCR mixture is treated with DPN1. DPN1 is a restriction enzyme and um, it cleaves the DNA at methylated adenosine sites and then used to transform bacterial cell. Most of the transformants will have mutant gene. That's also correct. PCR followed by transformation of bacterial cells directly with reaction mixture. None of the transformants will have mutant gene. There will be transformants. It is not that none of the transformants, they will be transformants. Then next one, the PCR mixture is treated with DPN1 and then used to transform bacterial cell. Half of the transformants will have mutant gene. 
not half most of the transformants will have mutant gene so c and d are not correct answer is option 1 a and b coming to shift 2 which one of the following statements related to genetic transformation of plants is correct negative selection of markers need to be expressed only under strong constitutive promoters for development of transgenic plants this was asked in shift 1 also the same statement is repeated over here the next one a transgenic plant containing two linked copies of the transgene in heterozygous condition would segregate in a 3 is to 1 that is transgenic to non transgenic ratio for the transgenic phenotype on self pollination that is correct then agrobacterium mediated transfer of t dna into a host plant does not require host plant proteins it require host plant proteins in binary vector system of agrobacterium tumefaciens the oncogenes are located on the helper plasmid oncogenes are located on the t dna so b and c are also not correct only uh, sorry c and d and a are not correct b is correct so the answer here is option b or second one then coming to the cree lock gene system this i have already explained in one of my previous videos so i will be just telling out the answer you can refer to my previous videos for that i have explained it over there which one of the following statements about cree mediated site specific recombination or lock p sites is incorrect when lock p sites flanking a test sequence are oriented in same direction cree mediates the excision of the intervening sequence that is correct they have asked for the incorrect statement lock p sites in inverted orientation around an intervening sequence lead to inversion upon action by cree recombinase that is also correct lock p site recognized by the cree recombinase are palindromic around a spacer sequence that is also correct lock pre cree system cannot be used to generate translocation between chromosomes that is not correct it can be used to generate translocation between chromosome so the answer here is option 4 they have asked for the incorrect statement so the answer is option 4 then next one in forward genetic screen to investigate the heat stress response in arabidopsis a team of researchers identified and characterized gene x that shows some sequence homology to alpha subunit of heterotrimeric g protein since a typical alpha subunit of heterotrimeric g protein localizes at the membrane in a eukaryotic cell researchers sought to validate whether the protein coded by gene x localizes to membrane in tobacco protoplast to achieve this they cloned the gene in fusion with gfp at its end terminus under the control of camv promoter however upon expression of this gfp gene x fusion construct they did not observe any membrane localization of gfp signals in tobacco protoplast based on this they made a few assumption which of the following options represent all correct assumptions so what they have done was uh, in to investigate heat stress response in arabidopsis they characterized gene x that shows sequence homology to the alpha subunit of heterotrimeric g protein and a typical alpha subunit of heterotrimeric g protein localizes at membrane in the eukaryotic cell they thought they will validate whether the protein coded by gene x also localizes to membrane in tobacco protoplast so what they did for that to achieve that they cloned the gene in fusion with gfp at its end terminus so they made a fusion pro, uh, construct where the gfp was fused at the end terminus under the control of a camv 35s promoter but upon gfp upon expression of this gfp gene x fusion construct they did not observe any membrane localization of gfp signal in tobacco protoplast they couldn't observe any membrane localization so what are the assumptions they made and which of them are correct assumption 
N terminal tagging of protein X with GFP may block membrane localization of protein X. That is correct. <clears throat> then, tagging of protein X with GFP may alter the conformation of protein X because of its bigger size. That is also correct. Tobacco protoplast are logos systems. Yes, the he, for expression of gene X and thus the protein X does not localize to the membrane. That is also correct. Gene X is not getting transcribed because of the wrong promoter choice. That is not correct. Promoter the CMV35S promoter, it is a constitutive promoter. So that is not correct. So which of the following option represent all correct assumption is A, B and then next one for the template sequence given below which one of the following combination of primers can hypothetically be used to amplify the target region so they have asked for the primers now the forward primer will be same as this sequence in the 5 prime 3 prime direction same as this one this is where your forward primer sequence will be it is same as this sequence and uh, this sequence that is your reverse primer it will be complementary to this sequence read in 5 prime 3 prime direction so the forward primer will be atcgac so that is there in uh, uh, pr uh, primer 2 and primer 1 in the case of option 2 and option 3 but we have to see for the reverse primer which is which will be in the reverse oriented complementary to the 3 prime 5 prime region of the dna given so it is c t g c a t so that is primer 1 corresponding to option 2 so the answer here is option 2 then next one Given below is a figure representing expression level of transgenic protein in 10 independent transgenic plants generated using the same transformation vector by agrobacterium mediated transformation. Given below are few statements to explain the above data. Which one of the following options represent all correct statements? So, they have given a figure representing expression level of transgenic protein in 10 independent transgenic plants generated using agrobacterium mediated transformation. They have asked for the options with correct statement. So, first one, plants 4, 9 and 10 that show high expression levels. 4, 9 and 10, yes, they show high expression levels of the transgene would necessarily contain multiple copies of the transgene. They, if it was multiple copies, then it should be low expression levels, not high expression levels because multiple copies, you can get gene silencing effect also. So option A is not correct. So wherever option A comes, you can just ignore those options. So option, first option and the fourth option, option A is there. So they both are not correct. Now we will see for B. Plant numbers 2 and 7 contain mutation in the coding sequence of the transgene in the construct. 2 and 7 there is expression. So there won't be any mutation in the coding uh, sequence. So that statement also is not correct. The transgenic plant may contain varying number of transgene copies inserted at different location in the host genome. That is correct. C is correct. Then C is there in option 3. Okay, the next option is E. The stability of the transgenic mRNA and its trans stability would not be different among the independent transgenic plants. That is also correct. So C and E are correct. What does D say? So your answer will be option 3. D say the host genome has no role in influencing expression level of the transgene. It has role in expression of transgene. So D is also not correct. So the answer here is option C and E. Then next one. 
Which one of the following combination of enzyme used for cloning a linear insert fragment into a digested plasmid vector would have the least probability of generating self ligated vectors in a cloning experiment following complete digestion of all vector molecules and no further enzymatic treatment of the vector so you shouldn't get any self ligation that is the question that they have asked so which kind of restriction enzyme you have to use for digestion now first one insert sma1 vector also digested with sma1 so there is more chance of cell self ligation as both are producing blunt ends so that option is not correct then comes uh, sma1 and hink2 and sma1 alone so that also uh, blunt end like uh, cutting so they also chances of more self ligation being obtained then third one if you see hin3 and xho1 so hin3 and xho1 will be different enzymes so least probability they will be self ligated hin3 and xho1 so there is least probability that they are using different enzymes so the least probability that they will be self ligated the next one is fourth option is eco r1 eco r1 again you are using the same restriction enzyme so chances of self ligation is more so the answer here is option 3 so now we will see september 22 shift 1 question paper coming to the first question if you want to selectively kill the newly dividing mammalian cell in a cell culture assay which of the following methods will you use so here you will be using treatment with 5 bromo 2 deoxyuridine because it is an intercalating agent followed by uva exposure so answer here is option 3 then next one which one of the following traits would hypothetically not be considered for preferential selection during domestication of the corresponding crops listed below increased fruit size of tomato yes reduced spininess in okra yes shattering of seed corns no increased oil content in mustard yes so answer here is option 3 then next one the figure below The figure below depicts a hypothetical scheme for synthesizing a target product in plants. A, B, and C are the precursors of the target product D, whereas E is a byproduct. The key enzymes of the pathway are indicated as E1 to E6. To enhance the levels of the target product, which of the following strategies following strategies were tested? Which of the above mentioned strategies are likely to provide the maximum enhancement of the target product compared to the byproduct if no feedback regulation exists for any of the enzymes in the pathway Then if you see statement A enhancing the activity of enzyme E5 by over expressing and or protein engineering So if you enhance the activity of e5 it will give rise to more product d that is target product d so a is correct then enhancing the activity of the enzyme e4 if you enhance the activity of e4 it will result in production of more c from c it will produce d as well as e you won't get d alone so that is not a good option enhancing the levels of c if you enhance the level of c I, d and e will be produced so d alone will not be produced you have to see for maximum production of your target product that is d blocking the activity of e6 by rna interference or crispr cas mediated knockout if you block this activity of e6 e will not be produced you will get more d so d is also correct So the option is opt for A and D. Then next one that is match the following. 
the table following table enlists different ways of carrying out reverse genetics that is column x and different strategies to achieve the same column y which one of the following options is a correct match between column x and y so a that is random mutagenesis random mutagenesis it will be transposable element as well as uv mutagenesis so a will be 2 and 4 so it cannot be option a or option c it can be either option 2 or 4 then targeted mutagenesis is homologous recombination and crispr that is targeted mutagenesis so 3 and 5 so your answer is mostly 2 3 and 5 and c phenocopying c is rna i so the answer here is option 2 then next one mouse igm molecule was injected into rabbit to generate anti serum which one of the following mouse antibody components has the possibility to be recognized using the rabbit anti serum in western blotting so it is both igg fab-2 fragment and j chain because fc region will not be recognized because fc region of igm and igg will be different so the answer here is option 4 then next one given below are few statements about plant breeding and transgenics recombinant inbred lines and double haploid populations have high level of genetic homozygosity that is correct they have asked for incom incorrect statements so a is correct gene pyramiding involves introducing different genes for resistance to a specific pest in different genotypes of a plant species it is not different genotype it is the same or same plant species so b is not correct agrobacterium strains with disarmed ti plasmid do not require vir genes for transfer of tdna they do require vir genes for transfer of tdna so option c is also not correct molecular breeding can be used for crop improvement if the trait of interest is present in naturally occurring populations of the plant that is also correct so they have asked for incorrect options and your incorrect option are b and c and the answer is option 4 then next one protein a was subjected to different experiments sds page with then without beta mercaptor ethanol beta mercaptor ethanol it breaks the disulfide bonds fluorescence far uv near uv cd spectra at ph 7 blue and 3 which of the following option provides correct inference protein a is a uh, ss bonded homo tetramer and each subunit has molecular mass of 50 kda so if you see that first statement itself it is a homo tetramer that is why you get a single band over here um that is 50 kda and if you do without beta mercaptor ethanol you get a 200 K kda dalton uh, sorry kda band over here so it is a homo tetramer with the native showing 500 kda sorry 200 kda band and sds page with beta mercaptor ethanol treatment showing uh, 50 kda band so it is a homo tetramer and each subunit has a molecular mass of 50 kda that statement itself is correct so they have asked for the correct inference so option 1 is the answer then next one given below are names and recognition sequences of a few restriction enzymes that are used for cloning experiment the cleavage site of each enzyme each enzyme is indicated by star given below are different vector vector and insert fragments generated by, by digestion using the above restriction enzyme which one of the following option represent the correct combination of the vector and insert respectively which generate compatible ends for ligation 
Now, before coming to explanation, I will show you one example that is BAM H1 and BGL2. Now, BAM H1, it will digest like this as I have shown here. And BGL2 also digests like this resulting in cohesive ends. So, compatible means if, you, if one side is with the, if the vector fragment is having BAM H1 and your insert is treated with BGL2 or vice versa also, if vector is treated with BGL3 and BAM H1 for insert fragment and if you add both of them, they will ligate with, due to complementary base pairing. Now, if it is BAM H1 and BGL3, see here, it is G C C T A G and this fragment G A T C T, it will bind over here because of complementary base pairing. See here C G T A A T G C. So it will bind through complementary base pairing. That is what they mean by compatible ends. Now if you are using blunt end ligation, then no need to see for uh, such kind of combinations. Com complementary uh, base pairing you need not have to see. Because they are blunt ends, they both will ligate together. So for eco R1, they have given as eco R5. Eco R5 is a blunt end cutter, so that is not possible. Eco R5 and Hink 3, Hink 2, that is possible because they both are blunt end cutters. Then BAM H1 and eco R1, you won't get compatible ends like this. So BGL3 and BAM H1, that is correct. And Hink 2 and BGL3, that is also correct because... Oh, one is uh, blunt end cutter and the other is a cohesive end cutter. You can convert the cohesive end cutter to a blunt end cutter using different DNA uh, enzyme. So the answer here is option B to D4 E1. So answer here is option 2. Then coming to next shift that is September 22 it's shift 2. So the first question. What is the nature of the successful anti-cancer human papilloma virus vaccine? It is an L1 major capsid protein self-assembled into virus-like particles. So answer is option 3. Bio-augmentation refers to, so it refers to addition of selected microbes, both archaea and bacteria, to the polluted site so that biodegradation is enhanced. Answer is option 4. Which of the following methods can be used to selectively lyse newly dividing cells? So it is uh, bromodeoxyuridine labeling of dividing cells followed by exposure to light. Answer is option 3. Then next one. The information obtained by comparing a new diagnostic test with the gold standard is summarized in a 2 by 2 table given below. So they have given uh, true positives, false positives, false negative, true negative values. You have got the formula for calculating sensitivity and specificity. The answer here is sensitivity is 68% and specificity is 78%. I have given the formula in the next slide. So this is sensitivity calculation. That is true positives by true positive plus false negative. You will get 68% and specificity true negatives by true negatives plus false positive. You will get 78%. So your sensitivity will be 68% and specificity will be 78%. Then next one. What can you infer if the correlation coefficient that is Pearson correlation is close to minus 1 for two set of variables? So for two set of variables if the Pearson um, coefficient, co correlation coefficient is 1 then there is a linear relationship showing that as x increases, y also increases. That is, if one variable increases, the other variable also increases. Now, if it is minus 1, it shows that as x increases, y decreases or if x decreases, y increases. That is, it shows an inverse relationship. 
So out of these, the answer is there is a linear relationship in which when there is an increase in one variable, there is a decrease in the second variable. Answer is option 4. Then next one. The distribution of heights of college students aged between 18 to 20 was found approximately normally distributed with an average mean of 54 inches. So mean they have given standard deviation 2.5 inches. What is the Z score for the student who is 5 feet tall? Now Z score is given by the formula x minus mu. Mu is your mean divided by standard deviation. X is your sample. Now the sample they have mentioned as 5 feet tall. It is 5 feet. You have to convert feet to inches. So for that multiply by 12 you will get 60 inches. Substitute in the formula. 60 minus 54 divided by 2.5 you will get 2.4. So the answer here is option A. Then next one. What will be the percentage transmission when absorbance is 1, 2, 3 respectively? A is equal to minus log T. Uh, T is equal to 10 raised to minus A. So 10 raised to minus 1. That is 1 is the first um, value they have given in the question. So a ra 10 raised to minus 1 it will be 0.1 or percentage transmittance will be 10. Similarly for 2 also you will get percentage transmittance as 1 mm, and for 3 you will get it as 0.1. So the answer here is 10, 1 and 0.1. Answer is option 1. Then next one, an in vitro translation system capable of incorporating approximately 8 amino acids per second was programmed to translate a single mRNA that codes for an alanine rich that is approximately 35% alanine with a uniform distribution of alanine. Proteins of 275 amino acids including a hexahistidine tag at the C-terminal end of the protein. The protein possesses three methionine residues at amino acid position 1, 135 and 230 and generate polypeptides of 15 KDA, 10 KDA, 5 KDA upon degradation with cyanogen bromide. So let me explain this part first. So it is an in vitro translation system and it is capable of incorporating approximately uh, 8 amino acids per second and it is alanine rich so this is the protein it is 275 amino acids long it is alanine rich and it is 275 amino acids in length and it has got a C N terminal and C terminal end at the C terminal end you have got a hexahistidine tag and uh, at the end terminal you have got a methionine then a methionine at 135 and a methionine at 230 so if you calculate these 1 to 135, there will be 135 amino acids. 135 to 230, there will be 95 amino acids. And 230 to 275, there will be 45 amino acids. So 135 amino acids will give you 15 KDA. 95 amino acids will give 10 KDA. And 45 amino acids will give 5 KDA proteins upon treatment with CNBR. With, okay. Now CNBR also has another property is that it will not cleave the methionine residue at the termi terminal. It will cleave only methionine residues at the internal positions. Now next what they have done. The translation reaction was initiated and the ongoing reaction was supplemented with 14C alanine. So 14C alanine radioactive labeling and already the protein is rich in alanine. So you will get uh, radioactivity in your after 5 minutes soon after addition of 14 C alanine aliquots were drawn at 220 and 200 second so after addition of 14 C alanine aliquots were drawn at 220 and 200 seconds and the reaction in the aliquots was instantaneously stopped so the reaction was stopped at 220 and 200 seconds the translated proteins were purified on NINTA columns. Now why did they use NINTA column? Because you have got a hexahistidine tag at your C-terminal and the C-terminal end it will bind to the NINTA column. 
then they were processed for degradation by cnbr resolved on sds page and visualized by non quantitative auto radiography which of the following auto radiogram represent the expected pattern of the bands so this is the uh, protein and this is the uh, the kda kilo daltons that you will get upon cnbr treatment now i have labeled it as a b and c wherever you have got these methionine amino acids i have labeled it as a b and c so first will be that is if it synthesizes uh, eight amino acids in one second so after two seconds how many amino acids will be produced so approximately it will be 16 amino acids or even more a slightly more than that so you will get a band of 5 kda only after treat, uh, in the two uh, in the two second append off or at the two second aliquot then then you have got at the 20 second so 20 second means 160 amino acid so you will get c b and a now one more thing i have to tell you you have to count from the c terminus because uh, the bands Uh, c terminus as his tag is attached to the c terminus okay because his tag is attached to the c terminus and his tag is a must for trapping the protein to nnta column and uh, only then after this trapping only you can digest them with cnbr so if it is not bound to nnta column means you will not be able to digest with cnbr so you have to start counting from the c terminal and not from the n terminal end so c terminal c b and a these three bands you will get that is 5 kda 10 kda and 15 kda now if it is at 200 second our protein is only 275 amino acids you 200 second means 1600 amino acids so you will get all the three bands that is 5 kda 10 kda and 50 kda so your answer will be option 3 that is at 2 seconds you will get 5 kda band then at uh, 20 second you will get 15 kda 10 kda and 5 kda and similarly at 200 second also so the option here is answer here is option 3 then pbmcs from the blood were collected from a tuberculosis patient were given to four lab technician to perform any spot assay for interferon gamma while all steps recommended for early spot were followed the first step was performed differently by the four lab technicians as detailed below now how is this early spot assay conducted so for early spot assay first what you have to do is incubate antigen secreting cells in antibody coated well so this is the well where you have coated with antibody then this is the antigen secreting cell that is uh secreting cytokines or your interferon gamma because early spot assay is used to identify cytokine secreting cells then what you do is remove the cells by washing the secreted analyte is captured by the immobilized antibody so your cytokinin or your interferon it is going to bind to the antibody attached to the well then incubate with biotinylated antibody that is your secondary antibody incubate with alkaline phosphatase conjugated streptavidin add substrate and observe the formation of colored spots that is over here that is why it is called as it is similar to elisa method as well and it is called and you get spots only as your output so it is called eli spot assay now what did lab technician 1 do so lab technician 1 coated each well with 20 250000 formaldehyde treated cells and stimulated the cells with the tb and specific antigen now formaldehyde as all of you know it is a fixative and while washing the cells will not be removed so the assay will not come accurate so if lab technician has not done the correct early spot assay one okay lab technician 2 coated each well with 250000 cells and did not stimulate the cells with the tb specific antigen now if you don't stimulate the cells with the tb specific antigen then how will cytokines will be or your interferon gamma will be produced 
so b also has not done the correct early spot method then lab technician 3 depleted t cells from pbmcs completely coated the wells with monocyte enriched pbmcs and stimulated them with the tb specific antigen now if t cells are removed then interferon gamma is not going to be produced so technician 3 also has done a mistake now we will see what lab technician 4 has done so four coated each well with 250000 cells and stimulated the cell with the tb specific antigen so lab technician 4 has done the correct method so the answer is option 4 lab technician 4 then next one in a modified version of elisa a student first incubated antibody against the pseudomonas aeruginosa exotoxin that is pa exotoxin a with culture samples in a 0.5 ml tube to check for pseudomonas contamination each antibody culture mixture was then added to a micro titer plate whose wells were coated with pa exotoxin a this was followed by removing the antibody culture mix from the wells washing the wells adding enzyme conjugated secondary antibody specific for the isotype of the primary antibody and then detection with enzyme specific substrate reaction absorbance at 450 nanometers the values of absorbance at 450 nanometers for each of the four samples a to d is given below so these are the sample so first what was done was first antibody is against pseudomonas antigen is incubated which result in the formation of antigen antibody complexes now not all antibodies and antigen will form complexes some are unbound antibodies will be there which are called as free antibodies <coughs> <coughs> sorry then this antibody antigen culture mixture was added to plate coated with pseudomonas antigen this was followed by removing the antibody culture mixture from the wells by washing so the free antibodies would have bound to the antigen coated to the wells now secondary antibody was added and the color formed was recorded using a colorimeter now if contamination is more it means antigen is more okay then antigen antibody complexes is more and free antibody is less so less color develops and lower absorbance value will be shown so least absorbance means higher contamination so here you have got c as the least absorbance then comes d with least absorbance then comes a and then comes b so the answer here is option 1 c d a b then next one the table below list terms used in bioremediation and explanation for the terms you have to match them which one of the following option is a correct match between the terms in column x and explanation in column uh, y bioventing so bioventing is it is a technique to add oxygen directly to the site of contamination in an unsaturated zone which stimulates in situ aerobic degradation so a3 a3 is seen in one option a option 3 and option 4 okay natural attenuation natural attenu attenuation is indigenous level of con containment degradation without any treatment b1 so b1 is seen in option 1 and option 4 now coming to c air spraying air spraying is for it is a technique for adding oxygen to the saturated zone below water table to stimulate degradation c2 c2 is seen in option 4 so option 4 must be your answer then bio stimulation is modification of environmental condition by adding nutrients to enhance biodegradation process so the answer is option 4 a3 b1 c2 and d4 then next one given below are terms related to genome editing tools in column a and their feature in column b zfn is sing finger 
nucleus sing finger nucleus is fusion of sing finger dna binding domain with endonuclease domain of fock 1 restriction enzyme that is uh, a3 then mega nucleus is homing endonuclease crispr cas9 is a target specificity using guide rna and talen is repeat of 35 amino acid length each amino acid binding a specific dna base in the target sequence so the answer here is a3 b1 c4 and d2 option 2 is the answer a3 b1 c4 and d2 then next one given below are list of statistical terms in column a and associated properties or features or descriptors in column b so anova anova is for comparison of means of two or more samples poisson distribution is to quantify errors in count data standard error is dispersion of the repeated sample means around the true value and kurtosis is pointedness of frequency distribution so the answer here is a3 b1 c4 d2 that is option 3 then next one three reactions were performed to detect a 150 base pair dna fragment rich in gc content using pcr amplification method and the following radio labeled material five prime p32 labeled primers so primer itself is labeled that means you are sure shot going to get a band alpha p32 labeled dctp and gamma p32 labeled datp all the reaction had the remaining components for a successful pcr amplification after pcr amplification the samples were run on an 2% agarose gel the gel was then exposed to radiographic film from the radiographs given below which is the correct representation of the reaction now this is your base uh, dctp now dctp is labeled with alpha p32 but if you label with gamma and beta you won't get any radioactivity because gamma and beta will be removed when you form nucle phosphodiester bonds but if uh, alpha by alpha p32 will be uh, retained so you will get a band for a which is primer then you will get band for alpha p32 labeled dctp but you will not get band for alpha p32 labeled datp gamma p32 labeled datp so c you got a band in option 4 so that is not correct option 3 is also having a band for c and option a is also having a band for c so that is not the correct option option 2 is correct answer is option 2 so next question given below are radio imaging technologies with the type of radiation radio isotope that is used for the same which of the options represent all correct statements so computer tomography scanner uses uv rays it uses x rays magnetic resonance imaging uses non ionizing radiation that is correct thyroid uh, scintigraphy uses iodine 123 that is correct phase contrast radiography uses x rays that is also correct fluoroscopy uses x rays that is also correct so the answer here is b c d e only a is not correct so that's it thank you for watching my channel please do like share and subscribe if you are new to my channel please don't forget to subscribe thank you